Today, we will review the Slum and Blight National Objective Self-Certification Form, which, effective October 18th, 2020, is one of the General Land Office's required documents for voluntary buyout or acquisition programs. The Slum and Blight National Self-Certification Form can be found on the Texas General Land Office website at recovery.texas.gov. To locate the document, go to the Local Buyout and Acquisition Program page, which is linked below in the description section of this video. Scroll down to the left side checklist section and click on the Slum and Blight National Objective Self-Certification Form link. Once you click on the link, your computer will download the fillable document. Please note, you will need Microsoft Word to view and edit the document. Subrecipients are required to complete the Slum and Blight National Objective Self-Certification Form for every Slum and Blight applicant. Once all eligible Slum and Blight applicants have been identified, the form should be completed. Instead of completing a separate form for each Slum and Blight applicant, the form can include the addresses of all eligible Slum and Blight applicants in the Project Description section and then a copy can be filed for all the Slum and Blight applicants. In order to use the Slum and Blight National Objective, the subrecipient must clearly document how each program and or activity funded under the Slum and Blight National Objective meets the requirements of the objective. The Slum and Blight National Objective is carried out to address one or more of the conditions which have contributed to the deterioration of an area or spot designated as slum or blighted. The focus of buyout and acquisition activities under this national objective is to eliminate the conditions of blight or physical decay through the acquisition and demolition of dilapidated property or properties. The purpose of this form is to ensure that the buyout or acquisition program is in compliance with the Slum and Blight National Objective requirements for all applicants and that all required information is clearly documented in the file of each Slum and Blight applicant. All sections of the form must be completed. For this video, I will use an example of a fictional applicant and location to explain the form. Section 1 of the Slum and Blight National Objective Self-Certification Form is to enter the program information. First, the subrecipient will input the funding source that will be supporting the proposed project. In other words, name the federally declared disaster event that provided funding under the General Land Office contract for this project. The example used is Hurricane Harvey Local Buyout and Acquisition Program. The next cell is to enter the federal award number. This is the award number that will be used on Federal Assistance SF-424 form. It is also located on the first page of the GLO contract. For example, we have used B17DM480001 for Hurricane Harvey. Next, list the subrecipient that administers the funding. In this example, we are using Rango County. The contract number is the GLO number located at the top of the first page of the GLO contract. The next line to be completed asks for the service area and project name. For example, the project name is Rango County Local Buyout Program. The service area is the target buyout or acquisition area that was identified in the subrecipient's housing guidelines. For example, for Rango County, the service area encompasses neighborhoods in the city of Enterprise that are closest to the Amazon River, specifically the 700 block of Dulce Road, the neighborhood between the River and Friendly Street, and the 800 and 900 blocks of Waterfall Drive and the 800 block of River Drive. Following the service area and project name is information pertaining to the form and the requirements that must be met to use the Slum and Blight National Objective. More specifically, the form lists out the Slum and Blight National Objective requirements under 24 CFR 570.208B. The requirements state that 
Activities served under the Slum and Blight National Objective must meet one or more of the following criteria, and in the absence of substantial evidence to the contrary, will be considered to aid in the prevention or elimination of slums or blight. The first criteria mentioned that could be used to address slum and blight is on an area basis. The regulation states that in order to address slum and blight on an area basis, it must meet all of the following conditions. Condition 1. The area delineated by the subrecipient meets a definition of a slum, blighted, deteriorated, or deteriorating area under the state or local law. Condition 2. In addition to meeting the previous condition, the area must also meet one of the following requirements. Requirement 1. The public improvements throughout the area are in a general state of deterioration. Or, Requirement 2. At least 25% of properties throughout the area experience physical deterioration of buildings or improvements, or abandonment of properties, or chronic high occupancy turnover rates, or chronic high vacancy rates in commercial or industrial buildings, or significant declines in property values, or abnormally low property values relative to other areas in the community, or known or suspected environmental contamination. In addition to conditions one and two stated previously, to meet slum and blight area basis, Condition 3 requires documentation be maintained by the subrecipient to justify the determination of the slum and blight area, such as documentation must be kept on the boundaries of the slum and blight area and the conditions and standards used that qualified the area. The subrecipient should identify the state or local law that defines a slum, blighted, deteriorated, or deteriorating area and document how the area meets that definition. The designation of an area as slum or blighted under this section is required to be redetermined every 10 years for continued qualification. Documentation must be retained pursuant to the record keeping requirements contained at section 570.506B8II. The final required condition to meet slum and blight area national objective is that the assisted activity addresses one or more of the conditions which contributed to the deterioration of the area and the contribution to the deteriorated area is documented. Another criteria that may be used to identify a buyout or acquisition as a slum and blight national objective is on a spot basis. These are activities that eliminate specific conditions of blight, physical decay, or environmental contamination on a spot basis and are not located in a slum or blighted area. Examples include acquisition and demolition of a dilapidated property, rehabilitation of a decayed community center that eliminates code violations that are detrimental to the health and safety of potential occupants like faulty wiring, falling plaster, or other similar conditions, preservation of a deteriorated building of historic significance, financial assistance to a business to demolish a decayed structure, remediation of environmentally contaminated properties, Note, if acquisition is undertaken, it must be a precursor to another eligible activity funded with CDBG or other resources that directly eliminates the specific conditions of blight or physical decay or environmental contamination, for example, demolition. The third criteria that could be used for activities to address slum or blight is an urban renewal area. An activity will be considered to address prevention or elimination of slum or blight in an urban renewal area if the activity is located within an urban renewal project area or neighborhood development program action area that are necessary to complete an urban renewal plan. A copy of the Urban Renewal Plan in effect at the time the CDBG activities carried out, including maps and supporting documentation, must be maintained for record-keeping purposes. 
note, this national objective category is rarely used in CDBG DR as there are only a handful of communities with open renewal plans. The second section of the form is titled Project Description. Here, the subrecipient must document how each program and or activity funded under the Slum and Blight National Objective responds to the disaster-related impact for the area and how that has caused the identified slum and blight to be eliminated. Buyout programs should identify how the buyout and demolition of the property responds to the disaster-related impact that has caused the slum and blight. Acquisition programs should identify how the acquisition, demolition, and reconstruction of the property responds to the disaster-related impact that has caused the slum and blight. Backup documentation should be attached including designation maps and resolutions adopting such. In addition, all of the slum and blight national objective buyout or acquisition properties must be identified by address. For our example, we will insert a fictitious scenario. In the scenario, there are five homes that were heavily flooded and suffered severe wind damage during Hurricane Harvey in the city of Enterprise. There is an explanation as to how the slum and blight national objective funding is needed to prevent the city from future health and safety risks. And a fictitious location of the city is also provided as well as a history of flooding in the area. In addition, the slum and blight national objective properties to be bought out or acquired have been noted in the description. It reads, in 2017, Hurricane Harvey stalled along the Texas coast and rained for multiple days before coming on shore. The city of Enterprise was hit hard with being in the direct path of the storm and being in such a low-lying area. In the city of Enterprise, 100 homes were destroyed. The service area encompasses neighborhoods along Manchester Highway that are closest to the Amazon River, specifically the 700 block of Dulce Road, the neighborhood between the river and Friendly Street, the 800 and 900 blocks of Waterfall Drive, and the 800 block of River Drive, where there was severe flooding. All structures suffered heavy wind damage as well as severe flooding. The structures were also covered in mud and silt as they are so close to the marshland. Within the 700 block of Dulce Road, there were five homes that were completely destroyed. Nothing could be salvaged. The homeowners did not have flood or wind insurance and could not recover. These homeowners did not have flood or wind insurance and could not recover. The homeowners left the area after the hurricane event. These homes have been sitting vacant since the hurricane and are rapidly deteriorating. All windows are broken out or missing, doors are all gone, in some cases the roofs are missing, and conduit is still hanging out. Not only is this section of the neighborhood an eyesore to the community, it makes the area unsafe and is creating health and safety concerns for the city. Rango County is requesting a CDBGDR grant to assist with the acquisition and demolition of the five homes as part of the Slum and Blight National Objective at the following locations. 751 Dulce Road, 752 Dulce Road, 753 Dulce Road, 757 Dulce Road, 761 Dulce Road, all within the city of Enterprise, Texas. These homes are not located within a slum or blight area, as the surrounding homes in the neighborhood were repaired and are currently inhabited. Instead, the program proposes to eliminate the slum and blight homes on a spot basis through the acquisition and demolition of the dilapidated properties. Without the assistance of this program, using the Slum and Blight National Objective, the condemned homes will remain in the neighborhood for an extended period of time, causing health and safety risks to the community. Our focus and need is to have these structures demolished prior to the next hurricane season to prevent excessive amounts of flying debris during another event and to prevent potential fires of destroyed structures, which can spread to other areas of the neighborhood. In addition, we are concerned about potential health hazards to the community with the increase of disease-carrying rodents and people of the community exploring the dilapidated buildings and suffering physical harm or death from the unstable structures. 
Section 3, the final section of the form, is the certification of signature. This section requests the signature of an elected official of the subrecipient. The certification states, by signing this form, the elected official certifies that the information provided is true and accurate to the best of his or her knowledge and belief. Warning, any person who knowingly makes a false claim or statement to HUD may be subject to civil or criminal penalties under 18 U.S.C. 287, 1001, and 31 U.S.C. 3729. In this scenario, we are using Sonia Jenkins as the county judge. With her signature, she's attesting that this is the current situation of the area and that the county is in need of this funding to protect the town and prevent future damage and health and safety risks. Being an elected official of the county, she is also attesting that the information provided is true and accurate. The elected official will print their name, title, and sign the form. The form then must be dated for completion. We hope you enjoyed this training on the Slum and Blight National Objective Self-Certification Form. If there are any questions during the completion of the form, subrecipients should reach out to their local General Land Office Grant Manager. Additional videos covering the other required local buyout and acquisition forms are, or will soon be, available at the same location you are viewing this one.